Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue learning about how organisms respond to their environment. Specifically, we're going to look at something called stimulus and response. If you need to get a hold of me, you can see my email address is rcropper at jcbsmail.org. That is still the best way to contact me if you're having problems or just need some help. If you haven't already, please gather your materials before you begin the video. You'll need a pencil, your science notebook, and some color pencils. Let's take a look at a couple of review questions from our last lesson. First question is, I want you to name this life process. The ability of an organism to detect and respond to changes in its environment. So we have looked at several of the life processes already. Um, we've looked at reproduction. Uh, we're going to look at a couple more. But this is a life process that would have to do with organisms responding to their environment. Were you able to remember that that's sensitivity? So sensitivity is the ability of an organism to detect and respond to changes in, in its environment. Let's look at another question. Ooh, this is a toughie. In one word, why is it important for organisms to be able to respond to their changing environment? So. Anytime I just need one word, that makes it more difficult. So take a moment. Why do they need to be able to respond to their environment? I hope that you were able to remember it's for survival. We, look at, we looked at the wildebeest migrating for food. We looked at predator and prey uh, responding to each other. We looked at uh, animals caught in a wildfire. But survival is why organisms need to be able to respond to changes around them. Let's take a look at some lesson objectives for today. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to explain what receptors are and where they are concentrated on animals. So what is a receptor? Where are they? You should be able to tell which organ system receptors belong to and explain how information moves through this system. So what system are they part of? Explain what a hormone is and the function slash job of a hormone. You'll need to be able to explain what stimuli are and be able to list some com common examples. You also will need to be able to explain what a response is and list some common examples. And finally, you'll need to be able to list two types of stimuli and explain how they are different as well as list two types of responses and also be able to explain how they are different. Let's jump right in. We're going to look at this diagram quite a bit. And so our title here says Sense Organs and Receptors. So if we look at a diagram, uh, we can see that we have a glass of water and it's called a stimulus. We have a receptor and that looks like a big eyeball. And then we have a sensory neuron, which looks like this sort of branched network. And a neuron, I want you to think of nerves in a nervous system. We have a relay neuron. We can see that our brain with C and S under it, meaning central nervous system. And then we have a mo another type of neuron called a motor neuron, and we can see branches there. An effector, which the effector in this case is that muscle. You can see that that muscle attached to the skeletal system. And finally, a response. And notice that that response is labeled with an arrow moving upward. Okay. So sense organs and receptors. So animals detect changes in their environment using their sense organs. This is not, this is not rocket scientist uh, stuff. You, you've absolutely learned this many times in the past in other science classes. So our sense organs, of course, when I say that, I just really mean our eyes, our ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Those are all sense organs. So always think of your five senses. And please understand that these organs, uh, your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin, uh, are mostly part of your ner central nervous system. Sense organs, when we talk about them, have special cells in them called receptor cells that are able to detect changes in the environment. So receptor cells are just, receptors are just specialized cells that detect changes. And really, these receptor cells are used by an organism uh, to gather information about the environment around us. So a receptor is just a cell that's used to gather information. 
So here we have that same diagram again, and we're going to look at how we start with something called a stimulus or a change in the environment and how that turns into an action, how it, how it turns into the organism responding to its environment. So these receptor cells, as we said, detect these changes. And once they detect a change, the receptor cells are going to send a signal. That signal is mostly electrical signal through the nervous system, go so through the brain. Uh, the brain is sort of our decision-making uh, organ, and it's going to make a decision about what to do with the information it's got. So the brain really decides how to react or respond to a change in the environment, and then it makes a decision and sends information to other parts of our body uh, to help us figure out how to respond. And in this case, as we see in this diagram, um, maybe you're thirsty and the receptor says, aha, there's some water. Uh, so it sends that information up through the brain. The brain is like, I could use some water. I'm kind of thirsty. And so as a result, the brain tells your, the muscles in your arm to pick up the glass, raise the glass to your lips, and then to drink. Okay. So um, remember, the brain is our decision maker. And the muscles are what's called effectors for us. And those effectors help us actually produce a response. Now, we have to be able to look at receptors, but we also need to know that um, our body and the body of other organisms uses something called hormones. Now, this is a word that you've undoubtedly heard of before. And it may seem a little strange that I have a, a postal carrier, a, a male person here for hormones, but I hope you'll understand why. So the nervous system, as I said, uses electrical systems to receive information about our environment and to send signals. However, our bodies also use chemicals called hormones to pass along information. Often, uh, the chemicals help us understand how we should respond once a receptor has gathered some information about the, the environment around it. So the easiest way for you to think of hormones are messenger chemicals. Hopefully that makes the mailman or the postal carrier there make more sense. Messenger chemicals means that they deliver messages to other organ systems. So, for example, in response to a stimulus, your body may produce a hormone, and that hormone will then enter your bloodstream, and it's going to deliver that, um, that chemical signal, that messenger chemical, to all parts of the body, and then your body is going to end up, from there, uh, making a decision about how to respond. So hormones can all, messenger, these messenger chemicals can also be a type of response. So let's look at these stimulus. So a stimulus is really just anything in your environment that, that can change, and specifically one that will cause a change in behavior. So anything can be. And so let's take a look at this young girl here. This is a pretty simple, straightforward example. This young girl is standing in the sunlight, and she has uh, walked out in this bright sun, it's, it's caused a change for her. Maybe she was in a darker room. I want you to think of this as kind of like the cause because a stimulus can be relatively anything. Here, the stimulus is the bright sunlight. So this young girl is going to react to this stimulus. Notice that stimulus, uh, if there's more than one of them, we can call them stimuli. She's going to react by squinting. Some of you know that you naturally squint when you uh, have a bright light that is shown into your eyes. Uh, and she's also shielding her, her eyes with her hand. So that's kind of like an effect. So, you know, anything can be a stimulus. Maybe it's not bright light. Maybe it's a predator in your environment. Um, you know, it, maybe it's uh, you're responding to hunger or thirst. Maybe you just got to go pee. But all of those things are, are going to be stimuli. When we talk about stimuli, it's impossible to talk about them without also talking about something called a response. And the response, if a stimuli is a cause, this is the effect. So let's take a look at this image. We see, uh, we see a pan, a hot pan, because it's over a fire, and someone's hand is reaching it. And then we can see in that next pane at the bottom that this person has realized this pan is hot and it's caused them some pain and they've let go of it. So a response uh, is just an organism's reaction to a stimulus. So anything that an organism does uh, is, is a response is when it's reacting or responding to its environment. 
Um, you can think of this sometimes as uh, as a reflex. You might think of it as a reflex. You might think of it as a, a learned behavior, something an organism has learned to do. All of those are examples of types of responses. So once again, we look at our example. You touch a hot pan, pan burns your hand, you quickly let go of the pan. Our stimulus, of course, is touching the hot pan. Uh, your uh, receptors in your skin are going to um, they're going to gather that information that there's uh, something hot that's uh, potentially harming you. It's going to send a signal through your nervous system up to your brain. Your brain reflexively, without really a lot of thought, a lot, a lot of decision, is going to signal send a signal to those effector muscles. They're going to tell you to let go. So the nervous system is going to carry those uh, those signals. And the muscles are going to pull you away. So response and stimulus. When we talk about stimulus, and remember more than one stimulus we call a stimuli, we need to talk about two separate types. And they're very easy, very easy to tell apart. So we have something called an internal stimuli. These types of stimuli are things that are going to come from inside. So an internal stimuli is a change from inside the organism or inside the body. Um, some examples of this would be some we've already listed, uh, hungry, maybe you're thirsty, you're sleepy, maybe you're sick, you have to pee. Any of those things are good examples of internal stimuli. That's not a complete list. Of course, there's many more. So we have internal stimuli, and some of you may already have guessed that the other type of stimuli is an external stimuli. An external stimuli is the opposite to the fact that it is a change from outside the organism um, or outside the body, meaning um, from within its environment, the environment that surrounds the organism. Uh, these are the types of uh, stimuli that we are mostly going to focus on. And so external stimuli, uh, changes from outside the body, are definitely one of the things that organisms have to be able to respond to to survive. Examples of this would be things like temperature. You may remember that image that we looked at that showed all the cattle uh, hiding from that, that really hot sun in the shade of the tree. Uh, you, some other stimuli could be predators or maybe prey, uh, depending on which one you are. Uh, loud sounds can absolutely be a stimuli. If you've ever had someone make a loud noise next to you and you jumped reflexively, that is a very good example of a external stimuli. And your response would have been to to be startled, to jump, uh, or touching anything that causes pain or discomfort. All of those can be examples of stimuli, external stimuli. So two types of stimuli, internal, which is from within, and external, which is from the environment. Uh, there are also two types of responses. And like the two types of stimuli, these are very easy to tell apart. Uh, the first type of uh, response is something called a positive response. Positive responses are when the organism has a response and it's actually attracted to the stimulus. Maybe it moves toward it. So a positive response would be attract, being attracted to whatever the stimuli was. Um, here's a good example of, of a, something I might have a positive response to. The stimuli, of course, would be this, this apple pie uh, a la mode with the ice cream on top. Um, that's something that if I saw that, um, in our kitchen right now in particular, I might be tempted uh, to move toward it with a fork. And so when we look at these, uh, when we look at these uh, positive responses, uh, we're going to find that we also might have negative responses. So these are going to be, if, if positive responses are something the organism moves toward or is attracted to, negative response is going to be, of course, something that the organism moves away from. So it's a stimulus that we might be repelled by, but we want to move away from. Certainly uh, one thing that I am likely to have a negative response to, and some of the rest of you may as well, might be uh, a large hairy tarantula spider like this. Some of you might find that it's uh, maybe snakes. Um, if we saw a grizzly bear, you know, we might feel, we might have a negative response to it. Uh, Things that smell really bad or taste really bad. Uh, those are things that we might respond negative to. So positive responses, um, the organism attract, is attracted to, moves toward, 
and negative responses the organism is repelled by or moves away from. Okay. It is time for you to get some notes in your notebook about these ideas that I've been talking about. So in just a moment, I want you to stop the video and I want you to copy these notes exactly into your notebook. Uh, if something is underlined, please underline it and please don't abbreviate. I've tried to make these as short as I can for you already. And keep in mind, these are to help you on future quizzes. Okay? So this is the, the things that you need to be able to know. Receptors, hormones, stimulus response, and then, of course, a short, some short information about the two types of stimuluses and the two types of responses. Go ahead and pause the video, copy your notes, and then hit play again. All right, you're back to me. So here's a short, I say a short lab, but it could take you a while because it's going to be fun. So just for fun today, I want you to take a look and really start paying attention uh, to the external stimuli that are around you. Um, of course, as always, I want you to write some observations in your notebook about what you notice. So to do this, start paying close attention to your senses. And I want you to see if, if you hear a loud noise, how did you respond to it? If you see something, how did you respond? Did you smell something cooking? How did you respond? Uh, I want to really focus on external stimuli, and I want you to try to make a connection between how your behavior, your response, is connected to whatever the stimuli are around you. If you're very thoughtful about this, uh, some of you are going to come to understand that a lot of the things that we do are really caused by stimuli that we're not even aware of. Our brain, these receptors are continually taking in information, uh, gathering information, and then send them to our brain. And a lot of times our brain in the background, so to speak, uh, is on autopilot making decisions about how we're going to respond to what's happening around us. If you could take a moment and be present and just see if you can uh, spot some behaviors, some responses to stimuli in yourself and uh, have fun with this. It's uh, uh, Right now I'm actually thinking, is this happening around me? And I looked and saw my coffee and you guys know what that means. That means it's time to go. So that does it. Until next time, stay curious.